good things come to an end. So also included. How are you folks? Can Hi, Mr. Salim. Hello. Hey, so good to see you. Nice seeing you too. Oh, this is this is the uh, the members of the Alpha and Omega team. Uh, yes, it was actually last tango in Paris, I believe it was though. There you go. Um, uh, listen, this was the tango in sound. You will see the tango of teacher and technology in action in this session today, and that's what we'll be talking about. It's going to be just like the tango. This is the blend. This is the blended blending of teacher and technology that we are talking about. Wherein, in a tango, when the, the bodies of the dancers intertwine and entangle and make it one, this is how you know we'll be making, we'll be combining the teacher and technology and combining into a one dance in the classroom. That's what the whole blended teaching and blending learning is all about. Uh, who can tell what is? What do we what do you mean by blended learning? What do we what do you what comes to your mind when we talk about blended learning? It's blended a mix of learning. in person and it's kind of hybrid learning. Kind of hybrid. I think that's exactly what you know brings me to that you know kind of a little slight confusion that we have, where you say um, that this is kind of hybrid. Is actually a, these are kind of related um, but two different domains in terms of teaching in blended learning we are talking about in-person teaching the students are sitting in front of you they are right there in a hybrid when you when someone uses the term hybrid in terms of teaching and learning we are talking about online teaching this is where the students are sitting remotely they are, they are learning remotely. So in blended learning, we are talking about expanding that on in-class face-to-face instruction. The students will be sitting in front of you. That is the new focus. That is the topic of today's presentation. How to amplify, how to enhance, how to expand um, in class teaching okay the traditional in class teaching wherein you uh, you present the, the teachers gives a lecture you know there are activities follow up activities there are assessments and all that those although the still the uh, what they call the the the, the golden uh, golden mark in terms of uh, teaching and learning but it has its limitation. You cannot go outside of you know what you have in front of you in that class. A blended teaching actually takes whatever teacher teacher is teaching in a classroom, and goes from that point on beyond into all those resources, and and uh, areas and and all those um, tangents of of learning which are not possible in a face to face instruction. So that means we are in this blended teaching and learning. We are talking about bringing down the walls of limitations on on comprehending, on 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 understanding, on taking it from one level to the next and to the next and to the next, all with uh, with a student's own ability level. So it means in a in a blended classroom thing, you will have five, six, seven, eight, ten different different stages of learning happening simultaneously. And that is where today's session and, and the tools that I'll be sharing with you and the strategies I'll be sharing with you, these come in handy to take your teaching to the next level. So what isn't blended learning? That's the first thing. It's not a replacement of a traditional teaching. Why? It's not. It's not. I'm sorry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Carlos, you, you want to say something? Okay. Yeah. So it's not. 
Uh, switching tools. ¿Cuánto valen esas pastillas? Yo te las compro. ¿Eh? Carlos, no, mute your no, mic, please. No me da pena que tú. Que, pero yo sé que tú las vas a encontrar. Se van a comprar y van a. Eh, dinero perdido. Ok, se van a encontrar. Van a aparecer. Espere. Carlos, please mute your mic. Sorry. All right. So I have a question for Carlos now. Carlos, if this isn't blended learning, what blended learning should be? That's a question for you, Carlos. Repeat. The question is, if these things are not blended learning, it's not a replacement of traditional teaching, it's not replacing one tool of teaching with another, it's not just using technology, uh, it, it can be performed, you know, with art in, 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 in a routine, traditional way of teaching. So what do you think, you know, would be blended learning? To me, blended learning would be combining uh, virtual and classroom at the same time. Excellent. Excellent. So that means this is what now we're talking about blended learning. When we are combining in class or, or in person teaching to technology, we are now talking about enrichment. We're talking about expansion. We're talking about tailoring it to each student's individual level of uh, competence and take it from that point. This is what gives, this, this is what distinguishes blended learning from traditional uh, learning. Because in a traditional learning setting, the teacher would receive a student assignment, student submission, and take his or her sweet time to come back to the student with a feedback. But in a blended learning environment, the feedback is right there. And it's automatic. In most cases, the feedback is automatic. And I'll teach you how to use the tools that provides students instant feedback uh, from, from, from your own lesson plans, from your own presentations, uh, using how to use Google Forms to create instant feedback assessments that students not only use to, to find out what's right and what's wrong in their submissions, they also find out what's the next step. If something is, is wrong, how do I relearn it? How do I, and how do I uh, uh, get a clarification on? All that is included in the same one assignment. And then finally, look at the amount of and the and the, the, the the variety of activities that are possible in uh, in a blended learning environment. And when we are talking about uh, the variety, we are also talking about the modes of teaching and learning. It's not only just audio. It's not only just video. It's a, it's a combination of virtual reality. It's a combination of in-person, uh, in person, uh, and, and, and audio, video, graphics, animations, uh, um, the social media interaction. All of these possibilities of interaction come in handy when we are talking about uh, blended learning. So that means you already know what good teaching is. This is taking that good teaching to a level where excellent learning is happening. From good teaching to excellent learning, that's where blended learning comes in. So now I will show you blended learning classroom in action. Uh, I'm going to mute myself, and I'm going to play on here. And I'm going to stop every now and then. Uh, yes, Elena, you can't hear it because I haven't started it yet. So this should be uh, this should be on in just a moment, okay? But can you hear me, Elena? Elena, can you hear me? Okay. Um, anyway, so you will see a classroom very similar to your own in action. Hi, Angel. How are you? Good. Nice job, Mr. 6.10. Um, so one of the toughest challenges that students face when they walk into classrooms is they feel tense. They're worried about being put on the spot, especially if they're behind or don't understand the skill. When they come into our classrooms, they know they're picking up where they left off. 
we're seeing students' anxiety levels drop and their commitment and desire to master content increase. So I want to shout out Nathaniel and Will. They came on their own time, they got some videos going, and they are ahead of pace. Eastern High School is located in the Capitol Hill neighborhood of Washington, D.C. Being 100% free and reduced lunch, our students come to us with varied levels of academic performance. When I came to Eastern, I was sort of shocked with how broad the variety of learning levels was. We have students who have experienced a ton of trauma, who are behind on certain skill sets, are ahead in certain skill sets, have different subsets of experience when they go home. I quickly found out that my traditional model of teaching was not actually effective. So at that time, I realized I needed to make a shift, and I wanted to start by getting rid of the lecture at the beginning of my class. I'm going to get started today with a revision. So Santana and Jamie, just see me in the back real quick. First of all, tell me, do you find similarities between the, 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 this group of students and the kind of students you, know, you get in your classes? Do you see some similarity yeah. here? Yes. Yes, I was about to say that, that you have shown an example of an urban district and an urban school instead of just primarily based Caucasian kids. So, yes. Mr. Kalachi, you want to say something? Thank you, uh, Purvi. Yeah, I wanted to say that this really is, this kind of hits home because these are exactly the type of students that we uh, are dealing with, not just one race, but all races, and also it's the same culture. And so what this uh, teacher just said, this math teacher really can kind of set the tone for us, going away from the traditional uh, thinking and starting to tailor it to the students because not everybody learns the same. You, you, I think, you know, you, it, you know, right on point here. Uh, just uh, go ahead, you know, um, Mary, you want to say something? Yes, just really quickly. Um, I appreciate these type of PDs, however, how practical is it when um, administration comes in and we have this type of, because honestly, some of these things are taking place in classes already. However, if our administrations are not willing to conform to what we're doing instead of the traditional, here's a do now. Like, if you don't want to do it that way, how is it that they're going to come into our world? You you are absolutely right. And um, uh, I, 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 I am. I'm still in your shoes. I have been in, in your shoes. And, and you know, the, the, I, I believe that, you know, what you raise is an, is an excellent point. But I'm, I can also uh, tell you that the entire district, the administration, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the people who are, who are watching over all of these things, they're also going through this transformation. They're also seeing now that it, it's not, you know, the same old, same old. Things have changed significantly, especially over the last year and a half or two years. They have seen um, the things cannot work the way that they have been working before. So I, I, I'm very hopeful that you will not have um, this kind of an issue from most of your administrators now. Let's say in this case, just imagine, you know, what he's saying that I got rid of the, the, the lecture at the beginning of the lesson. So what he did, he started with a revision. And that revision is a do now, right? So the conformity, yes, I agree with you. I, I'm, I'm, I'm a firm believer of teacher uh, prerogative, teacher independence. Uh, and, I, and I'm also comfortable that things are changing. And you will not be held accountable to a certain fixed mold to fit into every time. Uh, it will be much different now. So thank you very much for bringing this very important point here. Uh, but, you know, just look at that. You know, like, like I said, you know, you can see, uh, Mr. Kalachi said, that you can see uh, your own students with this group of students. It's an inner city urban school district. You know, our students have a similar emotional problem, similar performance problems. But look at the confidence of this teacher because he's so damn well prepared. And that's what you know, he's prepared based, based on technology. And let's move on and see what else you know, he has to say. The instructional model that I started implementing, there are three components, blended learning, self-paced structure, and mastery-based grading. What you would see today is really a controlled chaos environment. You have some students starting a new lesson, watching an instructional video, taking their guided notes. You have other kids working on actual lesson assignments. Hi, Angel, how are you? 
Good. Nice job, Mr. 6.10. There are three components, blended learning, self-paced structure, and mastery-based grading. What you would see today is really a controlled chaos environment. You have I had to stop it again. This new, you know, this is a term probably that you have read, you know, in, in, in the literature books, you know, on, on education. Controlled chaos environment. Our, <laughs> we, we are used to uncontrolled chaos in our classrooms. And I think uh, with this kind of... Uh, uh, a, a, a learning environment that he has created. I'm pretty sure this environment didn't come on the first day. This is not his first day of teaching. Probably this is the end of the year that you know, he has come to a point where students are engaged in that. But he set the foundation which ultimately evolved into that controlled chaos environment he's talking about. And I'm telling you, your, your principal, your supervisor, your, your, your administrators will get used to seeing this controlled chaos environment because that's when learning happens. That's where interaction happens. That's where engagement happens. Engagement is chaos. Engagement is, is a, but it's controlled chaos. You have all the, 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 the resources now that you will see in this presentation. You pick up all these resources and you see it will not work 100% just like you see in the video on the first day. But I can tell you that if you keep repeating this, if you continue repeating uh, the, the tools and strategy uh, strategies uh, suggested in, um, in this session, you will see the change in the confidence level and the control on the chaos in your classrooms over time. OK. You have some students starting a new lesson, watching an instructional video, taking their guided notes. You have other kids working on actual lesson assignments, collaborating on whiteboards, really problem solving. And then you'll see other students working on that. Doctor, take your volume off. I like what's the first class because it teaches you independence. For every lesson, we start off with a video, and then during the video, we have to take notes. Mr. Farrah, he does the videos himself. You'll hear his voice every time you watch a video. In today's lesson, we're going to focus on finding our local maxes and mins. I love it, actually. You get to pause it, stop, and then go back and be able to rewatch the lesson over again until I fully understand and grasp the strategies and formulas. And once they're done watching that instructional video, they transition to some type of an assignment or activity. That's it for A, right? Mm -hmm. And then we already found it over there. And now say find a rate of change in the weight of the oil. Everyone learns different. So you may be on lesson five, someone may be on three. It all depends on how you work. It's better than in a regular class where everybody has to stay on the same thing. The students help each other. So if you ahead, you might can help someone that's behind. Oh, okay, so I do get nine over four. You gotta divide the whole thing by four. Okay. Alright. After that. There's an exit ticket. So an exit ticket is like a mini quiz. It's just a couple questions at the end of the lesson that really succinctly measure the student's ability to execute the activities they learned. So when a student has mastered an exit ticket, they move forward. When they don't, they have a reteach. You're assuming that your Y is zero. Oh. Yes. And then they try a new exit ticket until they've achieved mastery. Show. Sure. OK. Uh, what do you see here? Who is doing most of the work in this class? The students. The students. There we go. Students are doing most of the work. And teacher is doing what they call the facilitation here. Teacher is, uh, is, is doing a teaching which is indirect. Uh, Mr. Kalachi, you want to say something? I just wanted to say the students were very successful in doing the work because of what the teacher did. He set up all those videos, and like you said, he was so damn well prepared. And that's the only reason how you're going to get your students to take off. you got to do the leg and let I, them carry it on. I couldn't agree more with you on that, John. Uh, just imagine the, the social cues that you're getting from that. Ah, oh, I mean, all these ahs and oohs tell you learning happening at a different level. The entire objective of a blended teaching classroom is to create what they call that, that awe 
the an, an environment or an atmosphere of awe in the classroom. Um, Mr. Uh, Mr. Lewis, go ahead. Mr. Lewis, I think you're muted. Go ahead. You're muted, Mr. M Mr. Lewis. We'll get back to Mr. Lewis. Uh, I believe there was another question here from uh, Tiffany. Uh, how can we navigate small group? Uh, that will come to that a, a little later. Um, what else we had? Uh, um, uh, Mary, Mary, what was this question? Can you explain your question? How will this work now that we are doing away with paper? Can you explain that a little bit? All right. So um, based on the PD that we had on the first day, um, uh -huh. there are no paper um, usage when it comes to making copies and things like that. So when it comes to differentiation, because some of our students, I'm a special ed teacher, uh -huh. also have a difficulty with technology. And of course, with this um, video, we have some working on paper, you know, videos being shown, things like that. Those are mul multiple usage of devices and, you know, instruction levels. How do we not implement this strategy now that is just strictly Google Classroom? Uh, I believe, you know, that there is no such thing as uh, as denying or, or, or uh, uh, prohibiting the use of paper if that's what you know, your students need. Uh, yes. But now they've know, taken away, like, there's no copy machine. So if we have to do that, of course, we're striving for mastery. So now we have to go out of our way to make copies and things. That will be out of our personal funding, right? No, I don't think so. I think, um, are we talking about that your school doesn't have a copy Unless, or what? Okay, so anyone that's from JFK that sat in the same meeting, we were told that we can't, we shouldn't pass around papers anymore for now, right? Due to the pandemic that's going on. Unless I misinterpreted oh. something. Out of yeah, I, I believe, you know, I understand what you're talking about. I think, you know, that's a CDC kind of uh, uh, okay. you know, guideline, you know, they are trying to follow. Uh, but I don't see any kind of a pedagogical, you know, prohibition uh, on uh, using uh, paper and all that. But you know, I think it's a temporary thing. If we get over uh, this passage, yes, uh, it's, uh, I'm sorry. It's, it's temporary because it could be like a biohazard handling papers during the 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 COVID spread. Okay, that's what they said. Yeah, I I I I, I, I guess so. Uh, Maybe it's good, good in this time, but it's not gonna be for long term. I hope so. Of course. They of course. they also don't want. I'm also from BTMF, and they do not want us um, sharing supplies as well. So that um, that is gonna limit. Honestly, you know, if if you if the people who know uh, me and and the way you know I've been operating, you know, I am perfectly fine with being a, a paperless environment because. Our devices allow you to do all that they're, they're doing on paper. You can do almost every single thing, you know, on uh, on a device. There are tools, and, I, and I'll share, you know, those tools with you that the existing devices allow you to do all of this. So you don't have to worry about, you know, losing anything. Mr. Lewis, go ahead. I'm sorry, Mr. you have been Can you hear me now? Yes, very well. Oh, okay, good. Uh, I was just saying that it should not be difficult to transition from the first day, which I hope I will be able to execute on um, blending because of last year we just will modify the amount of time uh, i'll make clear that since we're together now i can see the students i can walk around um, i can help them at each stage and they can progress at their own speed now it isn't that i have to set a set time you know, there, there will have to become a time when there's an assessment, but where they'll be able to do their work on their own at their own rate, and I can watch them as they're progressing and help them. Uh, I agree with you 100%, and, and I believe that this uh, your teaching from home has given us, you know, all this experience in seeing what works when it comes to interaction through the computers. And uh, Mr. Avina, you're next. Yeah, I just um, was, was thinking about how um, I'm going to be teaching blocks, so it'll give me opportunities for the kids to do a lot of um, student-centered learning. But 
everything is going to be done through Google Classroom. Any forms that you need um, don't necessarily have to be hard copies. You can you can attach them, uh, as everybody knows, to uh, your classroom. Any resources you have. Um, the advantage is, I, I mean, I'm still going to act as a facilitator. I believe that student-centered student learning is probably the best way um, for anybody to learn because you start owning, you know, instead of relying on everybody else, you have to you have to kind of problem solve yourself. But I'm I'm setting up my class totally Google Classroom, paperless, and a facilitator. Uh, uh, but as uh, Michael was saying, uh, it's great to be there when you can keep the kids engaged if they're kind of you know misdirecting themselves, um, and also give extra help at that point. Um, but uh, there should be no issues about uh, having forms for students to use and things like that online. I agree with you 100%. Sahil, you have a question? Mr. Shah, I think. Samira, you're next. Go ahead. OK, sorry. I'm muted. Oh, OK, uh, go ahead. Samira or Sahil? Uh, let's OK, go uh, let Samira me go first. first. Um, I agree with all of you uh the limitation of the contact between students as well as sharing um supplies or uh, handing out uh papers it's it's uh being um it's avoided right now uh but in the same time we don't know that when that's gonna end uh, it is temporarily but in the same time again we don't know a month a two two months a year six months and it is for sure causing some kind of uh, limitation. How can we help students? How can students work in a group? How can students help each other? Because the fact that they also have to maintain social distance. So my question is, what are the things that we could do in order to still be able to provide as a variety of activities as we can and the student can be motivated to work on their own or on the group, but at the same time, still maintain the CDC guidelines. And and I believe, you know, that's where, you know, I will show you some of the, the, the tools that the district already has and uh, that the, uh, some of the tools that you can create. And uh, I'll show you the tools and the strategies uh, which will answer all the, the, uh, the issues and the concerns that, that you're raising. Uh, Mr. Pustling, I believe you know, he had a question uh, or a comment. Um, uh, I think, you know, we answered that already, Mr. Puzzling, that um, feedback, yes, I think, you know, it, it is it's a matter of uh, your uh, uh, past experience because giving a feedback via computer uh, and, and uh, the, the software that we have now, it's far easier, far easier than, um, you know, giving um, the, the feedback on, on, a, on a piece of paper, especially if you have to give instant feedback. And I'll show you some of the tools where you can give instant feedback. And not only, you know, it, 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 ends, uh, it doesn't end there. It goes beyond that students now knows what is right and wrong in their, in their uh, uh, submission. And then what is the follow-up step? They all automatically move on to the follow-up step or relearning, reteaching. And then the, the cycle of learning continues. And I'll show you what I call uh, uh, a learning loop using Google Forms. I'll show you how to create learning loops in which even when you're not there, the student is getting the feedback automatically. And beyond that, uh, you know, they, they are uh, also completing the, uh, the, the follow up steps. Uh, Mr. Shah, go ahead. Um, here's the problem I kind of have. Um, I, I'm a special ed teacher myself, I work with the younger students. And um, let me see how I want to say it. Problem is that a lot of my students learn when their hands are dirty, mm -hmm. when they're touching the things, when they're doing the projects. When they're, and this during this year, it was very, very difficult for me to actually do worksheets just on the computer when they couldn't like touch the whiteboard and fill fill out the, like an addition problem, or when they have to do handwriting and they have to write a sentence. Because typing is a whole other genre versus writing. So mm -hmm. I guess my question is, if we have to go paperless, and and listen, I'm I'm I understand that we're in a pandemic right now, 
-hmm. How can certain things like this be implemented? Because not a, I'm a big tech guy. I, I'm, a, I'm a big tech guy, but technology is only one form of differentiating an instruction. It's not the way to differentiate instruction. It's just one of the many ways. Um, I, I think you know you you what you're raising. These are uh, these are the uh, the uh, evolving concerns that uh, we will have to face, and we'll be addressing this as we move on. And we'll we'll be you know continue uh, finding out about the solutions no. to each one of these uh, uh, issues. But I think you know. Uh, um, what uh, I got here, I think, Miss um, Lawrence Glance, um, he he has um, and, and uh, just a suggestion. Again, this is part of differentiating. He says, "I will let my students use their own notebook." Lawrence, you want to say yourself? You know what, what, what you're suggesting? You speak yourself about you know your suggestion, Mr. Glance. Um, yeah, sorry, I had to um, reach the mic. Um, yeah, some of my students are, have difficulty typing because they still do this, the one finger type. Uh -huh. So if they have their own notebook, I would let them write their answers, take a pic and email it to me. And that way, at least I could see what they have um, during this time of COVID. And it seems to work for them. Or I can walk well, from a distance and some of them write pretty big so you can still see it. And, um, cr critique it that way, but um, that's just another way to uh, well differentiate as somebody expressed and you know give them the chance to participate. I, I but, like I, to but, go ahead. Um, so, but again, it depends on you know students having a some paper or notebook with them. I mean, ideally, because we are not in ideal circumstances, so hopefully. Once this pandemic um, limitations are over, we might be able to combine it in you know, the way we want, ideally. But under the circumstances, we are all trying to get the best out of you know what we have, and and, and not put uh, put our, our own our own health on the health of our students in any kind of a jeopardy here. So thank you very much, Lawrence. You know this is an excellent excellent uh, suggestion. Hey, this is how you know people you know what the with the kind of feedback that you get you know on social media. That's all paperless social media. It's all feedback. It's it's a one hundred percent feedback on social media. is paperless, and they get more feedback, you know, than any place else. So I think what we are missing the the in in this whole thing, and that will be one of the things that I'll be uh, promoting in the coming days and months to create, you know, these um, educational communities, online communities of learning, meaning where you can interact with your students. Because right now we are not allowed to interact with students in, in any kind of a uh, outside of school setting but if we could create uh, the educational social media um, applets or, or environments wherein we can we can take this beyond uh, our classrooms and you will see the amount of interaction and engagement uh, going up um, among the students and between you and your students it will be it will be a lot more, and the learn that will be the real learning as a happening. Uh, and also, I think you know, Miss Lighty has about uh, students can use their own notebooks. Uh, yeah, they can use their own notebooks and keep it with them. And like a uh, um, Mr. Glantz said, you know, just take a picture and send it to us. So, a lot of uh, unanswered questions, but at the same time, you know, a lot is being left to our, uh, our, our, you know, our judgment or our uh, independence so be prudent as and and use whatever you want no time did you did get you your exit ticket right well your derivative is spot on so because i am not delivering a lecture i'm now free to work with students for the entirety of the class period x equals four yes woo Real quick, just remind me, what do you have to argue? You see that the feedback, the ultimate feedback uh, students can get is just one expression. Ooh, that's, that's what? That's the feedback that you got it. So I would call it, you know, this is serendipity that we are now going back and we can 
show these kind of uh, emotional and 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 uh, you know verbal expressions, which were difficult to to communicate, you know, through the computers. So the the possibilities are just getting kind of a, a you know a exponential in terms of their availability availability to our setting in the classroom. And I'll show you some of the tools that the district has already procured. That if you have those tools, so probably some of you are familiar with those tools already. But using those tools, we take your teaching and student learning to the next level. And that's what this whole presentation is all about. Who is more responsible for perpetuating the Cold War? I'm going to meet with a few people on topic sentences first. The video instruction. I must stop here for a minute uh, because you know she asks such an uh, an, 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 an curiosity creating question and that shows the importance of asking the right kind of question she's not asking what happened during the cold war or you know who was involved in the cold war and the, the chronology of the cold war what she's asking who helped perpetuate cold war that one question alone, I can foresee what would happen after that question. The amount of discussion that would follow from that asking the right question. If the students don't know the answer, just imagine because there's no Wikipedia that can answer that one question right away. They will have to now research multiple sources to be able to answer that kind of question. So crafting the right kind of questions is so valuable, is so important to find out uh, how to extend the, that, that curiosity, how to extend the search for, for, for a solution, for an answer. And that is possible only with the right kind of questions. So question creating is a whole uh, kind of a session in, in, in itself. So if you can, you know, think of that. I love the way, you know, she asked that question. Who helped perpetuate um, Cold War? It makes me feel like I've been able to clone myself. Instead of needing to explain a concept and then re-explain the concept and then say it again, I'm giving the instruction on the video, which frees me up to work one-on-one -on -one or in small groups. Does your topic sentence directly answer the essay question? No, it doesn't. Why, why? I like it a lot. I never feel like I'm being rushed or feel like, oh, I already know this. Like, why am I going over this again? I always feel like I'm being challenged. I have a really accurate pulse check of where my students are. So-and-so is on 6.9 and they're about halfway through because I haven't seen an exit ticket yet. Whereas another student has advanced to 6.10 and I can even lean on that student to explain something to their peers. Okay, so you're only going to use two quote explication charts. <laughs> your two strongest ones. I think it helps with your time management. A couple of days ago, I had to stay at the school to get my work done because I was slacking a little bit. Like when you miss a class, and you can watch the video at home to catch up. Part of the reason this format works so well is we have a lower than average in-seat attendance rate in a traditional format. Once the teacher delivers that lesson, they're moving on to the next lesson the next day. And they don't get an opportunity to go back over it. I've had students who, sadly, in a traditional classroom, they simply would have failed the quarter due to their number of absences for legitimate reasons and often sometimes really heartbreaking reasons. With this way of teaching, that student can come really with more of a fighting chance and ultimately pass a quarter. In our model, if a student is experiencing distress and needs emotional support, it doesn't disrupt the larger classroom environment. I'm able to pivot and work with that student, discuss what's going on, while the other students are able to access the content and flourish. You have to do 10, then put parentheses in the calculator too. I did. It's supposed to be a positive, girl. Uh. <laughs> do you see the dynamics of this classroom? How they are free to attend to those social emotional needs of their students. And it's all, like you know, John Kalachi said earlier, it's all because of the preparation. A lot has gone before this classroom, this class is happening. 
a lot, you know, and that is what has prepared that, that environment where the students are going through multiple moment, aha moments, the teacher is going through multiple aha moments, and, and, and technology is supporting all that uh, that is happening in here. Okay. So what are some of the activities that you say? Uh, Ms. Gilstrap, you know, can you explain your question? How do we get to this point? Can we, uh, can you explain uh, this question a little bit so that we could try to find yeah, out? Well, well, you're showing us kind of the end results. How do we get there starting in September, October? How do we train our students to, to do all of this wonderful, fabulous stuff to be self-sufficient for me to be able to say a vid post a video and then for them to start working on it and keep do what they need to do? How do I get there? Yes. And, and an excellent point. And remember that this is not the first class. I'm pretty sure this is not the first day of this kind of a class. This is probably the end of the year kind of class. What we are now uh, showing you is the possibilities and the end result of a blended teaching. Now we're moving into the area where do we start. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to show you now. In some of these things, and I believe, you know, uh, 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 you're doing already, you know, the blended learning activities that can happen. A lecture happens in almost every other class. Discussions happen all the time. Graduate practice happens all the time. Close reading, guided reading happen all the time. The areas, you know, where it goes to the next level of interaction and engagement is the gamification. And I believe uh, cahoots and uh, puzzles and, 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 and all sorts of uh, these games have added those aspects of interaction with the content already. Remember that, you know, that there are multiple levels of interaction in, in a classroom going on. There's a, a teacher to student interaction. There's a, a teacher to technology interaction. There's a student to technology interaction, a student content interaction. All these levels of interactions are happening in any given blended learning classroom. We now have to facilitate and make sure that there are no hurdles in the way of student interacting with technology, or even before that, there's no hurdles in the way teacher acting with technology, because some of the questions that we, we that we have tried to answer here, like you know, from going you know paperful to paperless, how do I do that? That is a hurdle that is between the teacher and technology. With the creative ways that some of you have suggested, we can overcome that kind of a hurdle. Same way, how many of our students are having that kind of a, a hurdle? With, with either you know not knowing how to you how to use technology if knowing use the hardware can they can they are they fluent in using the software if they're fluent in using the software are they following the the etiquettes and and manners of digital citizenship are they interacting with the content with technology in a way that is promoting an an, an environment of others responding to that and if someone is responding in a way that is that is uh, of offensive. Naturally, that's the end of the conversation. That's the end of the learning. That's the end of that assignment. So, teaching all these things now become the the domain of a good teacher. And my new favorite in the tools of teaching is uh, are the simulations, um, especially in the scientific subjects. We're talking about uh, you know uh, physics, biology, chemistry. Um, STEM, in all these areas, simulations come so handy. And, and when, I, when I talk about simulation, I'm talking about 3D and 4D environments. And when I say 4D, I'm talking about the actual virtual reality headsets around your head. And, and through that virtual reality, if you haven't tried some of the VR headsets, I think this is the time. Uh, if you tried it, you know, before the pandemic, you know, when, you know, putting a headset on your head for, for five minutes, you know, will make you woozy. I'm telling you, you should try the new headsets now. If someone has an experience with uh, this uh, Quest uh, or Samsung VR, the new Samsung VR, the new uh, Facebook Quest uh, headsets, Oculus Quest, you will see the difference in, in real learning. I am about to uh, make a, a, a claim here 
which will, which might you know create some kind of a um, you know agitation inside of you that teaching through simulations with a v VR headset can be better than in some cases and in actually let's say in more than some cases it can be better than in person teaching because of the immersive environment your students are in we are not you know just teaching when the students are distracted in talking to each other and and all sorts of things that are happening around them with a headset around their head 100% of the focus is on what's the content inside that headset inside that virtual reality headset that's where the focus and the attention gets the things done in 10 minutes which would otherwise take hours because uh, of he the he amount of attention he has his own insurance with his own vehicle coverage yes miss mm -hmm. miss valence you know you want to say something and then we're all set right so your change of cost your change of cost is 189 okay <laughs> all right uh yes um um mr rodriguez go ahead okay hello everyone now um yeah it's good what you said at dr Salim, because um you know, with the whole virtual learning, and you saying before that with blended learning, how we incorporate technology. I just want to say you were the first that told us as teachers to use a data binder on Google like five years ago, when some administrator said, "No, what do you mean? We needs to be on paper." Remember that everything was on on the internet. So you were one of the first people formal. You know, you tell us to incorporate Google Classroom. It was like five six years ago. So what it is now? A lot of teachers before the pandemic. They weren't utilizing Google Classrooms as much, but now, you know, because of the pandemic and now all these students have Chromebooks or, you know, now we can do a lot more PDs where we're incorporating technology, like you said. And that would be great with the virtual learning. Now, can we get headsets for all students? Like the, can we get that? Uh, yes. In fact, you know, there's no such thing as no. Um, okay. You, uh, I can tell you that you know these headsets. First of all, these headsets yes. are not as expensive oh. as they used to be. They used to be five thousand dollars at one point. Now they they're down to yeah. a couple of hundred dollars, two, three hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, but naturally there's a learning curve for teachers and students, you know, to use this kind of technology to its full potential. Okay. Uh, yes, th there's a possibility we can start you know, with a smaller school, um, in 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 a smaller setting, and. Um, and then you know then try you know you don't need to even have you know all of that at the school level start you know with just 10 headsets for the entire school start you know, with one classroom yeah. and and then see how it works i'm telling you you should see it and uh, um it's actually gone to the next level this presentation that we are having now this entire google meet I in see. a vr meeting in a virtual reality meeting which we have the headsets around your head it will feel like that you're sitting next to me there's yeah. no such thing looking at looking at uh a screen now remember you have to do it in, in basic i know a couple i think right before the pandemic there were a couple teachers who still didn't know what email was or you know but they've come a long way after the pandemic they learned a lot through, about technology in google classroom so that's good but um yeah hopefully we'd like to see that you know and i see a couple of my great teachers here uh harlan avell and sylvia varela great teachers beyond the classroom and they were the innovators of technology just like you were dr Salim, before that so we knew about this five years ago you know what i mean so yes. let's hope Thank that you. happens and, and i think that that and the thing is you know that uh, whatever uh, pandemic brought upon us it compelled everyone to use you know what we have been using for years exactly. um, um some of us you know were ahead of the game that's why i think I, I can rely on you guys to help the people around you who haven't had you know that kind that level of uh uh, opportunity to utilize these kind of things and help them to get on board. Uh, so that will be a great help. So, look yeah. at, so I so uh, I was talking about simulations and and virtual reality. If you if you try at home, try with something. If you get it for for your personal use, try it. And if you feel like using it, uh, uh, you will see the difference. You know that that these kind of things can bring back uh, in your classroom. Thank right. you very much, folks, for uh, your contributions. Now, these are some of the tools. What you're seeing here, these are some of the tools. Some probably you're using already videos and uh, commercial interactive content, ebooks, and all that kind of a stuff. I am um, uh, personally, and I believe District has a different uh, 
policy on that. I don't mind students using their handheld devices for learning, as long as you know you you could create an environment where they won't be using it for something other than learning. Um, great tools. These are just like microcomputers. You know that you, they can get access to and get you answer to the questions that um, you know you don't want to repeat. So let them use all, any of these any of these options. Um, we talked about VR headsets. If you can, and uh, I, I will talk about you know that commercial interactive content a little later. Some of us you know have used the commercial interactive content, and I believe you know Miss uh, Miss Ralph is is she is still here? She can tell you the commercial interactive content. You know that what I'm talking about and how we can incorporate that in our uh, daily lessons. Phenomenal, phenomenal tool. And I'll tell you, if I'm not mistaken, I agree. you were a sworn notebook teacher, right? I was. And, <laughs> and thank you for turning around. <laughs> no, thanks to you. <laughs> yeah. So let's move on here. Here's another um, This is now that tango I was talking about of the tango of the tech and the teacher. Let's see how this comes in play right here. I can say that the things I've been doing the last two years have really made a difference because my kids have scored the highest in the state on the standardized tests. So what we're doing here is working and it's helping them be successful. We define blended learning as the combination of digital content and activity um, with face-to-face -face content and activity. It sounds easy to blend, but it really it looks very different in every classroom. So if a teacher is using something that works really well in a face-to-face -face situation, they should continue to do that because it works well. Um, if they can find something else that works better, is more efficient or more effective that's digital, then that would be implemented. What I have online could be completely different than what the biology teacher has online or what the physical education teacher has online. It just depends what you need those kids to have in order to understand what they need to learn. Okay, go ahead and get the laptops. And actually, anybody that's in a small group, come over here. I need you to get a iPad. Why I wanted to go to a more blended environment was so that I could figure out a way to differentiate instruction within the biology classroom and I wanted a way to be able to work with students in small groups while other students are still engaged in content learning. There are three activities. One's a sorting sentence activity, one is an online interactivity, and one is small group that's going to be working with me. Okay, um, uh, slide to the apps and open up EduCreations. So we're going to fill in this chart because this is going to get us practicing base pairing between DNA, RNA, and reading our codon chart. Okay, so what goes with G? C. C. So I'm going to put G and C together like this, right? I've like probably learned more today just by doing this than I have the whole week that we've been doing this. We looked at the research about blended learning, we defined it, and then we had to figure out what would it look like in my class. And so that's when I went, well, I actually want to use it more as a tool for the kids at, for like supplemental materials. The top or the bottom of the cylinder. There's always so practice eight, problems or yeah. you can go listen to somebody talk about the topic. But the kids started to say that we don't want to listen to the, somebody else, we want to listen to you. And we need your help and we want to hear your voice. So I, I started to go, okay, well, how can I do that? And so our technology person said, have you seen this app on the iPad? And me not knowing anything about technology went, I have no idea what you're talking about. Teach me. So we went through a process of me learning how to use the Show Me app. And then I started making podcasts and it gives me a chance to be in their homes, wherever they are, 24 seven. It's virtual wellers, what we call it. And that will correspond to six to nine, like it has in the rest of the problems. 
The podcast like helps so much. It's like as if she's actually there and she just goes through it again and you can like finally understand it. I see them, they'll plug in, and I look over and they have it on their phones, they have it on their tablets, they have it on computers. They do podcasts for me during class time. I will have specific problems I want to see, just like, do they understand the basics of what we talked about today? 40 <coughs> 60 plus divide 40 to get C by itself. <laughs> and C is equal to 40 Yay! Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. For me, classroom time, direct instruction, investigations, discovery, that's all still part of teaching. It's not all online. A lot of the face to face stuff is still the most important thing to me. The online tools are there to help make understanding even better, even more rich of an experience for the kids. We really wanted the focus to be on the teaching and learning part and on the digital tool as a secondary thing. Kids don't always get it the first time or the second time or the third time and this allows different ways for those kids to get it. The pass rate for my kids the first year was 75 percent and the second year was 93 percent. The state average is somewhere around 60%, so something's working for these kids. Of course, something is working in a blended learning environment. Folks, um, can you, uh, yeah, I, I apologize. The second uh, Jamboard, please you know, leave that. You know, you don't need to uh, use the second Jamboard. Just the first one that I sent you is a question there. Um, what uh, software technology uh, that you have used for interacting the the interactive work you know with the students what software have you used in the last year alone i'll just uh, and i'm going to share this with all of you now remember that the question is about student interaction there must be some sort of a student interaction in whatever you're suggesting. Because I believe um, if you say Google Drive, you know, where is it? You have to explain where is the student interaction in that. Flipgrid. Excellent. Parlay, Quizlet. I see someone saying about audiobooks. This one is my favorite. With Learning Ally. Okay. Who said there is something about audiobooks? Can you tell me uh, a little more about it? Because that's my favorite. I, that might be me, uh, Mr. Salim. Uh, the uh, Jason Ryder, our, our supervisor of ELA, uh, got us hooked up with a Learning Ally, and it, they have all grade levels, all different uh, subject levels, subject matter, and different uh, Lexile levels for kids. Uh -huh. They have all types of books. Like they have like the autobiography of Malcolm X. They have many of the, the stories that are in our curriculum that we already use and they uh, they're audio books that kids can can access and uh, you can actually as a teacher put them in their own library so it's as if they have uh, the books already waiting for them I tried to set kids up with them before the school year ended but I'm not sure if they got if the kids have to uh, accept the learning ally app Kind of like they do when they when you invite them to Google uh, classrooms. I'm just not sure. So that's something that's going to happen in the next couple of couple of weeks, hopefully. Wonderful, um, Miss Ralph. You know, you want to you want to say something? Yeah, I'm sorry. The Jamboard is reached its capacity, so I couldn't join. But um, I wrote my answer on the chat screen. Oh, wonderful! Thank you very much. Very kind of you. Mm -hmm. And uh, listen, um, uh, the more the better. That's the thing. Um, the, the reason I asked you, David, about uh, audiobooks because I have been able to 
and, and I'm an English teacher, but I, I must confess, uh, reading is not, was not something pleasant for me also. Um, I started hundreds of books and, you know, left them in the middle or somewhere, you know, at the quarter sometime. Very few books and I would bring, you know, bring it to completion. Except for during the pandemic. That's when I came upon this concept of uh, what they call immersive reading. And what I mean by immersive reading, um, I use my town's library. In fact, Patterson School Library. I use the Patterson School, uh, uh, pa 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 Patterson Public Library card to borrow books from Hoopla, Hoopla Digital. Hoopla, by the way, is the, um, the digital library online, which allows you to borrow digital books, audio books, movies, music, and all that kind of a stuff. What I did, I started borrowing the text and the audio books simultaneously of every title that I wanted to read. Uh, I'm proud to tell that I've read almost 100 books of substance during the pandemic thanks to this immersive environment of audio and digital text simultaneously. <clears throat> because now I'm not trapped by or I'm not being uh, uh, hamstrung by regressive reading, you know, four words forward, two words backward, six words forward, four words backward. This is regressive reading, which is extremely demotivating and it takes reading forever. But if I'm reading and I'm listening simultaneously, my pace of reading, my fluency is being guided by the speed of my audio. I've been able to read books of substance from start to finish in a week, um, which was never possible before. And, and in doing so, I did not uh, uh, sacrifice any personal time um, with the kids or with anything like that. Everything went as, as it is. The only thing was when I read an hour at night or, you know, whenever I was, you know, sitting under the tree, I was able to read some substance instead of, you know, just coming up. All right. I'm just three pages forward and an entire hour had passed. I get it. And, and Kindle, because I, I, I subscribe to Audible also, mm -hmm. Kindle has this feature also. It's called immersive reading. And by the way, your students also have access to uh, the same feature of immersive reading through uh, Microsoft. If you can copy and paste any article in Microsoft Word, it will allow your students to do the immersive reading. What immersive reading does, um, maybe I can show you sometime later, you know, I can show you how it works. That each word is guided by the audio and it's highlighted while you're reading. It's highlighted. Those of you who have been teaching Read 180, you know where immersive reading comes from. Read 180 was successful, is successful because of that one feature of immersive reading. Headphone on, start reading, and each word is being highlighted. Someone who has experience with Read 180, please confirm what I'm saying. Dr. Salim, the, the learning ally does the same thing. It underlines the sentence as, as it's being read to you. And, and when you leave off, it picks up. If you like leave the website and come back, it'll pick up at the same place you left off. <clears throat> there you go. This I'll is just dig up. I'll put a link in the in the chat. That would be wonderful. And I believe the district has purchased Learning Ally also. Um, I'm not sure if for a, a, every school, but I know that Learning Ally is available in some schools of the district. Uh, folks, if you haven't tried the the audio books uh, and, and the audio and digital books simultaneous uh, work in uh, a learning ally this is the uh, this is the time you're going to love this this kind of uh, environment and for yourself start with your own uh, reading practice if you wanted to read something that you could read it you have this weekend coming up two days i'm telling you this will be the time for you to read and listen to some books simultaneously especially if you can do it with kindle or learning ally what i'm saying because um, the, the, the technology like this enhances the pace. The focus is there. The comprehension is there. You, you get bored because of that regressive reading. But if you can continue something like this, you know, through uh, immersive reading uh, uh, experience, you're going to love the way you can read. And I can guarantee you, your students will also have that, 
that that the feel of starting a book and completing it <laughs> probably you've never done before okay um excellent uh, we have all sorts of things here some of uh, i mean most of these are common uh, someone said about parlay can you can, who who said something about parlay can you explain parlay a little bit parlay so parlay is parlay is um a platform that um we've been trying to use for for because we've tried to have students do, um, you know, they comment in Google Classroom and then have a discussion. And so it's really a discussion tool that so um, you give them, an, it starts with an article or a video or something to get them thinking about the topic and you give them guiding questions and they answer the guiding questions and then their um, classmates go back and read their comments and they have to comment on it and they get graded you know really on the quality of their original comments as well as their um their comments um when they go back to look at what their classmates said it's the idea is to, to move the conversation not be a oh i agree with you but really something germane that really moves um what you're what's being said and um really we we loved it because it really brought back when i was in school um you know my college classes when i took online classes in college that's what my teachers were looking for and um really get them to learn to discuss because I, I i always tell my students you can be as wrong as can be but if you can support your arguments that is the whole point and that's what we're trying to get them to do in parlay oh i think you know that's that's probably you know that's the the uh, that's where the name comes from from you know, polished, you know, having the uh, reasonable argument. Thank you very much for sharing this, uh, Suzette. Um, excellent resource. Mr. Ali, I think you have a question or, or a comment. Mr. Ali, Sayyid, I think you're muted. Okay, um, we'll come back to that later. You know, I think you know, I, I thought you know, he, he, had, he raised his hand. So, uh, thank you very much for sharing these uh, uh, these uh, sources. Let's go back to our presentation now. Thank you for uh, sharing all your uh, the uh, uh, the software here in in, in this um, Jamboard. So, going to move on now. Mr. Wesley is confirming that Parlay is not free. Okay, so why this thing works? Why blended the concept of blending technology, blended, uh, uh, the, you know, blended teaching works? Because, like we said, it offers differentiation. It tailors each person's individual pace of uh, learning. Um, it provides at home, off school, sit alone, all that kind of environment. Um, just would you be kind enough, you know, just to mute yourself, you know, so that we don't get interrupted here. Um, it assesses in, in different ways. You can you can ask a student to record their answer if they don't want to write. You can ask a student to um, you know type their answers, or or, or uh, you can ask them you know to um, you know just find out uh, pictures or images about this they can draw whatever they want to do all of these things can be done uh, in an in uh, a blended learning environment and it provides instant feedback with an instant relearning once you give an instant feedback uh, it opens up the uh, the uh, the uh, the options where you the follow-up learning can happen automatically very important this is now the big thing social emotional aspects of, uh, of of a person of a personality are uh, now taken care of because for introverts for people you know who don't want to um share their their or their their, uh, their their opinions or they they don't want to express in public all right you know you have an option to do this in private uh 
you have the immersive learning um, sessions. You know, you can create 3D environments. You can also create, you know, like I said, virtual reality if it's possible. And then look, you know, how expanded now the resources are. Okay. Um, and all, all of these things we talk about, you know, it it it, uh, it helps in um, making us time efficient. It helps <laughs> students uh, do a lot more in terms of uh, um, the uh, the resources that are available. Uh, very important. It teaches them digital uh, etiquettes, digital citizenship, and finally, um, how to make use of all these resources uh, for digital literacy. These are all possibilities of uh, the blended resources in a classroom. But before we can get to that, and I think you know, that's where Miss um, um, Little, you know, she, uh, no, I'm sorry, I think you know, she was Miss Gilstrap, she was asking about how do we start. So please make sure that your students are familiar with the basics of hardware. And I, I can guarantee you almost 100% of your students, you know, would, would know about the computer hardware now um, much more than, you know, they, they, they had, you know, that kind of a knowledge at the beginning of the, uh, the pandemic. Uh, they know about you know, these uh, computers very well and how to make use of them. But you do have to teach them uh, the etiquette the of digital literacy. Okay. Uh, Hi, Nicole. Okay. Um, now, this is my favorite. Uh, if you look at the, the fourth one, which says uh, menu skills, what is menu skills? Many times when someone says, oh, this is a new software for me, I don't know how to use this. Everything that a software can do is embedded in the top menu. That's where you have the file, the edit, the insert, uh, the tools, the add-ons, and all that that you see that the top ribbon. Everything that a software can do is embedded somewhere in that menu. If you haven't started this in Google Docs, Google Slides, or anything, if you haven't started exploring the top menu of any software, this is a time to familiarize yourself you know, with that top ribbon of every software that you're using. I can tell you, 90% of your questions are, are answered in the top menu. Click on each item on the top menu. The drop-down menu will tell you the preferences, you know, the, the copying, the editing, the uh, insertions, uh, the splitting. Anything that you can do with any software is 90% of the time is embedded within that top menu uh, ribbon of any software. So practice it, and the rest, Go to YouTube. That's how I learn. That's how everybody learns these days now. Uh, YouTube, you know, will find you answer for every single thing. And if there is one percent, you know, that uh, you couldn't find anywhere, then you know, people like uh, me would come in handy at that point. Alrighty. And then finally, we have the search skill. Google search is not simple. Just putting in any word and finding out uh, uh, the authentic uh, authentic source for that information. Search skills is a is a whole new domain in itself. And uh, I want you to. I'm sorry. Someone had a question. It's all right. Um, so we're moving. Um, we're moving on. So now, now they have learned. You know, blended technology is going on in the classroom. You know, everything is fine and dandy. So what do we expect? We expect the students will be able to find the solutions to their problems the answers to their questions independently. That's the ultimate objective of uh, a blended learning environment. They won't ask the teacher for every single thing. They would know if they don't know the answer to something, how to find the solution. If they don't know how to do something, where to find it and you know practice doing it on their own. Blended learning technology, as I, as I told you earlier, it gives you an uninterrupted cycle of learning, um, assessing, relearning, reassessing, and to complete that cycle. And the tools of uh, today, including uh, Google uh, Forms, I'm a great fan of uh, customizing Google Forms to create complicated, uh, uh, sorry, not complicated, complex assessments, which include follow-up teaching also. 
So Google Forms you can use not you know just to submit information and give you know some multiple choice questions. Google Forms you can also use for uh, completing that learning loop in which learning happens, assessment happens, relearning happens, and reassessment happens, all leading to some sort of certification. That is all possible uh, with Google Forms. Uh, remember that. Blended teaching is enrichment. It is taking your in-class teaching to the next level. It is doing the things which are not possible in person, which are not possible, you know, through human-to-human uh, -human interaction. This is where you are taking your, your, your new learning, your, your new knowledge, your new information to the next level. And then um, all the lessons are driven by student motivation, to their own level of uh, complexity and and uh, the uh, their their competence, that is what uh, is the beauty of uh, um, blended learning. But every blended lesson lesson uh, has a same format. You know, it has a beginning, it has a is a middle, and it, it has an end, just like a a standard uh, lesson. But the difference is in a in a traditional lesson, and you know, I'm talking about the Patterson format uh, of uh, the uh, what they call a lesson plan. They want to start with I do, we do, you do format. Remember that you know this, your supervisors must be talking about that. I do, we do, you do format for, for a lesson plan. In a blended learning environment, it, it is all flipped. You know, you, you may start you know with you do. I mean, the students you know uh, submit something. And then you make corrections. Then I do something for them. I show them how to do it. And then we do it together. And then they do it again. So it's, it will not follow the same sequence of um, uh, the activities. The sequence you know, will be flipped. Uh, someone mentioned about a flipped classroom. That's what it's all about. Students learn something at home before, about the concept, about the topic that you're introducing. And then when they come to a classroom they're already half prepared they already have a full-fledged knowledge of what we're talking about they probably even have submitted an assessment before they come in and then you start from the assessment and that's what we saw in that video he was saying my do now is revision what you did before so do now is not you know just uh, a start of a lesson do now is revision of a lesson okay so all of these things are the, the uh, unlimited options that you're getting if you start practicing blended teaching and learning the right way. That's, that's important. Uh, let's... Here we have, this is my language arts teachers. This is my alpha group. Folks, remember the yellow wallpaper? It's, it's part of your curriculum, high school, right? Here I have, uh, on the right side, what you have, this is what teacher does on the right side you know, on, of this table. On the left side is the blended technology component of that. It may be very small what you're seeing, but I can tell you um, the difference here. Primarily, uh, the teacher, what is the teacher is doing in the yellow wallpaper uh, lesson here? Uh, the, the, the reading uh, the, a passage from uh, the uh, from the story, and then there is a close reading of the passage, where the the, the teacher is leading, or you know, and the student is leading the reading. Then you are interpreting the story, and then you are defining uh, any important vocabulary terms from that. From that point on, technology takes over, and that's when students could write one one uh, uh, paragraph uh, uh, reflection on uh, you know the on the story and then they can explore uh, on use the explore function of the google docs on the sidebar and take that reading to the next level google docs has an explore function let me show you what i'm talking about this is my favorite uh, remember i told you the um, the opportunity I got reading books, and um, one of the books you know that uh, that uh, I had an opportunity to read during uh, the pandemic was this book, uh, 
prize winning, uh, The Sense of an Ending by Julian Barnes. Um, anyone read it? The Sense of an Ending? Anyone? Anyone? Okay. Um, and now what I'm doing, actually, I'm retelling in my own words, you know, the, the story. And this goes on my own uh, uh, social media where I post my articles and, and my own uh, some you know creations I, I post in in one place and I'll share with you. I also um, uh, I I have created one. I think probably this is one of the largest teach from home LinkedIn groups, and I'll uh, sh uh, share with you in just a moment. And you can join that where I post all these resources in online teaching and teaching uh, with technology, including uh, the excerpts you know from the book that you're seeing behind me. This is the book I wrote on online teaching. All these resources are available on on that LinkedIn group, and I'll. Um, you know, sh uh, share with you how to do this. Now, if you're looking at uh, this, uh, consider that you know as a student submission. What are you seeing, you know, on uh, on your computer? If you uh, if you click on the sidebar here, you will see here. You see at the bottom here, explore. You see this? So. Let's say I want to uh, explore the word procreation. I was double click on that uh, and then select it and look at this one. It says explore procreation. This is now all the res results that I got on the word procreation and I can click on um, the, um, the the links here, right here, and I can also even uh, use this as a footnote. You see, cite as a footnote. I can use this as a footnote in this document by clicking on uh, the you know these uh, quotation marks right here. I can also right click on the word procreation and look for define procreation. It's now defining that word. And it's also giving me. Uh, I can also look for uh, the synonyms, and one of the, this is where the extension is happening. This is where, this is where the teacher doesn't have time to show a student the synonyms for a, a particular word or using those vocabulary terms in context. All of these things are possible only with, you know, with, with this. Um, in addition to that, look at, you know, all these uh, uh, in, in add-ons, the, all the tools that you have. You know, you can in, in insert diagrams in here. You can also uh, uh, what they call pro writing aid. This is my, but this is an expensive one. But you can use as an add-on uh, pro writing aid when the student it will, you know, check the student's writing style. Uh, it will also see you know if there is any problem you know with the syntax. It will uh, you know any plagiarism and all that you know that can be done in here, and it, they can also get the, a tool to get them into the habit of writing by forcing them to write in a certain amount of words uh, in a certain amount of time. So all these are the possibilities that uh, technology is offering you. So make use of these, um, these options that we have here. So this was about uh, the, uh, the yellow wallpaper. Uh, who has some experience teaching yellow wallpaper the last year uh, with technology? And you know, if you can share something, yes, Mr. Patola, go ahead. And what what uh, what did you use for that? So yeah, basically we, we went back. We found some, there's an audio version. It's about 27 minutes long, and uh, we in both the resource setting and the inclusion setting, we we try to tell kids, look, we would break it down during class. You know, like you said, page by page, paragraph by paragraph, kids reading uh, aloud. Uh, but a lot of the idea, like we told them, look, if you're walking home, put your earbuds in, play it. It's 27 minutes. You know, you can listen to the story, get the whole picture. Because the idea is when we break it up, like we break it up. And it, the first year I did it, it took forever. And uh, it was really kind of not productive. Uh, but last year, uh, Mr. Gut and I broke it down into like, look, the, the basic theory of this, this whole story is about postpartum depression and women's uh, role in society in the 1880s, 1890s. So, you know, the idea was to, to get kids in the idea of like, 
how were women treated back then, and also uh, to, to understand that they can go out and research current uh, trends in, in postpartum depression treatment and things like that. You know, so uh, we try to give kids all kinds of options. I'm, I'm, and, and folks take, you know, Mr. Petrella's uh, experience as an evidence that how this thing works. And I, I can guarantee you probably this is the first time that you've seen students actually completing, uh, uh, you know, uh, a story that probably would take forever. And it's not a long story. Like you said, it's only about 27 minutes. It would take forever. And you, that's where I remember that, you know, the, I, I believe, you know, I, IFL brought this thing to us, if I'm not mistaken. The, the yellow wallpaper, was it IFL or somebody else? It is, it's in the IFL. It's in the reader. Yeah. And I, mean, it's... I mean, can you believe, you know, in a high school, we are talking about um, um, one story, a, 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 a marking period? What kind of world are we living in? One story, a marking period? This should be, you know, two classrooms, max. Max, you know, two classes. Max, you know, two sessions. That's it. And we spend an entire marking period rummaging through, you know, just one story. And, that, and then we complain that our students, you know, get bored. What else they would do? They uh, hear the same thing again and again for three months. It has to be the variety, and technology can help us, you know, with the variety that that uh, our human mind needs. It can pique that curiosity our mind uh, uh, craves, and that's when uh, you'll see the engagement level going up, Mr. R yes, and and I agree with you, um, David. I think excellent. Um, Kind of a, a perspective you know you you are sharing on this so folks just look at this you know the 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 follow-up activities that you see here that you can also research it. yes mr wesley you have uh you have something to to contribute go ahead mr wesley okay um you know i was taught um the ifl process 10 12 years ago uh, eight to ten years ago um in the district and um you know stepping back you know creates sometimes creates issues and problems but i've learned to blend that into um uh, the teaching of a lot of these stories especially uh, the yellow wallpaper in which i really have to guide them through that story um a little piece at a time and through vocabulary and their ideas uh, we discover its meaning. Um, and if they're not clear about it, I help to clarify that by asking questions. And I use the, the Bloom's taxonomy um, to spiral up, so to speak, um, to higher levels of, of understanding and learning. And, you know, that works for me. And, um, yeah, but there are times with a, a piece like that where it can be frustrating. And um, I don't teach... Like with this particular text, I don't teach that it's postpartum depression. I let the students tell me what it is, and they pick it up right away. They pick up the the fact that she's having problems right away, but they don't really know why she's feeling that way. And they learn to blame it on others within the story until we get to that part in the story um, where it's revealed that she has a baby, and uh, and then they they put two and two together. Um, for themselves to figure yes. it out great, but remember that at the same time why I'm not a great fan of you know That kind of a story because one of the principles of a smart objective is relevance How relevant that story is you know to our student? Okay, can we find out can we? Substitute it with something more relevant to to their to to their context to their uh, to you know to 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 their lives uh, this story, you know, could have been fine, you know, at some point, but I think, you know, probably it has served its purpose. Now we're going to find out something else that's more no, relevant. It is a great story. It is a great story. And yes, it is. Um, the relevant relevance to our lives is the fact that um, that type of society, that male-dominated patriotic, uh, patriarchal society is still alive today. And we still have issues with, um, you know, birthing and all that. But uh, yeah, technology, infusing technology, um, that's awesome. Uh, especially if you can, we can, you know, put up the um, assignment, the reading assignment on the screen and then underline it and tear it apart and, and annotate it right on the screen. Uh, so it comes alive in that way too. 
course. But having having a reading for 27 minutes is awesome. And you can break that up too. Wonderful. So mm -hmm. thank you for sharing. I think that's that's why closed reading, oh, you know, you. those of you uh, who have uh, worked with the Read 180, closed reading was effective because, you know, that is a form of, you know, audio listening, wherein, you know, the, someone is guiding that reading instead of, uh, um, you know, that regressive reading and in, 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 you know, what they call in fits and starts. Um, instead of that, you know, you are reading it with expression uh, in, in a certain amount of, uh, of fluency. And that's what helps in engaging the interests of uh, the reader or listener. <laughs> okay. So thank you for your uh, perspective on that. The, this was for uh, um, the yellow wallpaper. Now I'm going to show you something for science teachers in this group. Uh, science teachers, uh, this again could be a, a something of high interest for your students. Uh, remember, you know, all this uh, uh, ancestry.com and all that, you know, uh, um, what they call uh, uh, 23, me and 23 was called. You know, there's another website, you know, that teaches about, you know, the ancestry and, and DNA sequence and all that. If you, this is how, this is now, again, the tango between the teacher and technology. This is where the blended uh, learning happens. The teacher introducing the, the concept of uh, DNA sequencing by you know by taking the students you know to uh, to click on this website it will open up uh, the website and uh, the students can see how dna sequencing works the the, the, the teacher can explain uh, what is uh, dna sequencing and what are the steps involved in dna sequencing what are the the the, the four bases of uh, uh, dna sequences uh, sequencing so you have all of this that you're explaining once you've done that, you can bring the students back to um, this, um, the, now the technology part of that, wherein they recap whatever they are learning through some sort of a Quizlet. You click on that, and it takes them to uh, a DNA Quizlet. You know, this is, now we are looking at uh, a DNA Quizlet, uh, DNA sequencing Quizlet, uh, Kahoot, on, uh, on this thing. So, you know, you can use this one for uh, reinforcing um, or for uh, testing the student knowledge of, of, of this or uh, playing what they call a, um, a, a gravity game, you know, that you can use with the, with the terminology of this uh, and answering questions. So all of these things are possible um, with the help of technology to reinforce the concept of uh, um, DNA sequencing. And then going back, you know, you can also take uh, students to uh, the real world, you know, take them to an Amazon page of a DNA kit. You know, all right, you know, this is how um, DNA uh, kit looks like. You know, this is the price of a DNA kit. So now just imagine that you are taking up a pretty complex concept, but you are making real. This thing is available, you know, for, for, for buying. This is how, you know, you will know um, how you... Uh, um, you know, uh, you know how you can get uh, a DNA tested for uh, for your ancestry. So, going back here, then you can uh, review further DNA sequencing through a Kahoot. So you you ask them, you know, go ahead and play the Kahoot. Now, the, all the uh, the things that I'm trying to show you are just to show you the variety that is possible in one lesson alone, all of that. And finally, you can you know, bring them to reading uh, a New York Times article uh, on uh, uh, you know, uh, how um, you know, uh, you know, DNA is used for uh, uh, the, the, the racism uh, discussions and the racism discussions. So all of that offers you all these resources to explain one topic one concept uh, with the help of technology so um it's about uh, two o'clock now folks we're gonna take about a 13 14 minute break we'll reconvene at 2 10 p.m reconvene at 2 10 p.m take about uh five minutes uh, i'm sorry uh, 14 minutes and we'll all come together again
Okay. Oops. Let me play this. And we're going to continue from this point on. And by the way, uh, those of you uh, who would like to continue um, uh, this discussion beyond this presentation, like I told you that I, I have uh, this, I've created this, um, uh, this, um, the uh, LinkedIn group for remote teaching group. You can join me there by either uh, uh, clicking on this um, URL, this link, or you can uh, just take a picture of this uh, QR code and put that QR code and join me uh, on my LinkedIn group. I have I posted dozens of uh, videos or recordings and, and articles on uh, remote teaching um, in this group. And I would love to share that with you. And it's gratis. Mr. Salim. Yes, sir. Is is there a sign-in sheet or something so that we can get credited for the um, for the PD? Um, I believe uh, that um, you know we have on the sidebar, you know, whatever messages, you know, your names are being recorded, and I, I believe. Uh, Google Meet is also recording um, who is who has attended and who is not. Okay, so it's uh, taking the in and out. Uh, it's recording everything automatically. That's okay. the, that's the beauty of technology. So we we don't want to waste time, you know, in doing something that can be done automatically. All right, so we are back. I think um, some of us, you know, were uh, caught off guard, you know, when we uh, went for a break. Because I've been hearing questions about, you know, are we, what are we doing? You know, we were on a break. That's what we were doing. So we are back now. We're in the last uh, 40, 45 minutes of our uh, work here. Um, we're going to move on. <clears throat> now I'm going to show you um, a real-life uh, blended teaching and learning uh, project that, uh, that uh, one of uh, my friends... Um, at uh, the Weehawken Public School, you know, they, they created their students. And if you're looking at it, um, this picture, this was a shark, um, which uh, a group of, you know, oceano uh, the oceanographers, you know, they were following. Um, they put a GPS tracker on uh, a shark. And then they hooked up, you know, with this group of students. And the students were also learning a lot about uh, what the shark was doing, you know, where the shark was moving. And they found out, you know, that the shark you know, moved in from New Jersey to, uh, you know, down south. And I, I went at some point, it went all the way to South America. Um, I'm going to show you just briefly uh, what's going on in this. And by the way, whatever, you know, you're seeing here, the students were watching the live feed, the video feed and uh, the live uh, GPS tracking of this particular shark. Between you and the Heading our way, I think, Brett. Huh? What do you think? You're halfway between. Coming, coming under to you, Jody. Coming right at you, Jody. Huh. She's gonna try to eat it. It's in the mouth. Yeah. In gear. Oh, search. Oh, search. Oh, search. Yeah. It's a contender. Oh, search. It's contender. We are hooked up. Hooked up. Yeah! This truly was the most historic, legendary fish we've ever captured. And it set the tone for Cape Cod in a very difficult environment with sharks that didn't want to bite. Before we let her go, I named her Mary Lee after my mother because my parents have done so much. I was just waiting and waiting for a special shark. It's just a historic moment and the most legendary fish I've ever been a part of. Oh yeah, oh yeah, Mary Lee, big girl. Now, just see in, in, in one video how many lessons are embedded. There's social emotional learning going on here. That, you know, they're talking, you know, he's emotional about uh, the, the naming the shark, you know, for his mother. The students are watching this whole episode of catching shark live in a classroom setting. Uh, someone went out of the way and uh, contacted this group and told them that we want to show your work you know to our students 
and the students are are falling you know whatever is happening um and then the the actual oceanography and you know how uh, or the, the these things are captured where they move you know how to do all of that that's going on in this setting and look at you know this is the actual uh gps tracking of this particular uh, uh this particular shark you see this it's showing you where it's going and the students are tracking this shark through this shark tracker thingy they are tracking this continuously on daily basis this was their this is how they are seeing all of that in their own classrooms they're seeing um, that this going on and the live feed from the actual um uh, you know event with the shark that's all happening here and here now one of the students is showing you what she has what you have seen in this episode. Uh, Mr. Lewis, I'll be remiss. So go ahead, you know, just, you, you had a comment or a question. Uh, yes, uh, this lesson with OSEARCH, we did this last year, it was fantastic. There's so much you can do. If you, sh if you go back to that picture with the map, uh -huh. um, you know, I'm teaching science, physics, and uh, environmental science. You can actually, uh, you can actually have the students measure how far between each dot uh, the shark travels per day. Wow! Yeah. yeah, they give you the time at which the track was given. They 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 then give you the next track, but they don't show the distance. So you can calculate by referencing on shore well it let's just say that there were myriad there i don't know how long we spent maybe two weeks and we followed several sharks it was it, it's really a fantastic uh science and also social like you saw you, they you to learn about the sharks. how how engaging that lesson was you tell me the, the, so, yeah the, the kids love that stuff they they and they also got the link so they can look on their own there you go. Yeah. So that's the beauty of uh, you know imbibing technology, and all you need to do is just you need to be resourceful enough. Just the way um, uh, Mr. Lewis is showing that we need to be aware of these resources that are available. Once you have that, I'm telling you, transforming your classroom to to into an an awe-inspiring setting. Uh, is just a few clicks away. This is how you know you would engage your students. Alrighty. So let me show you now the student perspective here. We have a partnership with a group called OSEARCH. Um, they're a group of research scientists who tag sharks in the wild. Um, and then assign each shark a Twitter handle. So parents can track them, students can track them, and there's a live data feed um, that we download in Google Sheets off the shark tracker. Our shark doesn't, I don't, is Nicole, and she's a hemorrhoid shark. She's a female, and, and she is 4166T. Our teachers are designing and have executed quad D lessons in which they use the data from the shark tracker to teach, you know, percent change, um, to teach hydrology, to teach um, GPS, to teach um, shark biology. And so it's become this really relevant, really relevant way to hook kids because um, what fifth and sixth grader doesn't love sharks? So I chose Manhattan. He is a male immature shark who was tagged in August. Not very long ago, a few years ago, he was tagged in New York State in Talk, I believe, and this is a picture of him. And so you're transforming from, you know, your old, you know, problem of Jose has 75 watermelons and Jill eats 22, what percent of gum? The answer to that problem is who cares, because it's not really relevant, because no one's going to ever eat 75 watermelons. But when you're talking about a great white shark, 
and how how um, deep down they go, where they where they reposition um, in in the ocean. The kids are really engaged in that. Also, that math has meaning. Uh, I feel like there are a lot of percentages involved. So you may be wondering what is the percentage of the amount of sea life in this part of the ocean to the amount of sea life in a different part of the ocean. And that once again may lead that they want scientists to ask questions and lead to more discovery. So we're leveraging our digital tools. Um, there's that relationship where we have um, been in contact with the shark scientists, we've Skyped with them, um, and then you have the rigor of the, the quad D lesson, which we're using that data um, to teach them that. All right. So this will just to give you an idea of the possibilities, you know, with this kind of uh, a lesson. All right. Now that you have seen all of these uh, examples in in a real classroom it's time to show you now um, the resource that is the district I understand has procured and some of us have used uh, that resource uh, tremendously um, in the uh, in the previous years since the pandemic and uh, let me uh, you know just ask Michael Michael um, I can't see the whole name Michael Mig Migliano something I'm sorry I can't see the whole name can you tell us you know how you have used technology uh, during the pandemic to engage students um, how have you engaged them well we uh, we used to do like a lot of um you know, like pr projects and different, you know, like different things. We used to like show videos and stuff, um, you know, to help them uh, like understand different concepts and stuff. Like the, um, like the uh, Moby videos, you know, we showed a lot of that and that kind of helped them caught their interest, you know. And what happens, you know, after the video? Uh, then we, we kind of get them involved in, um, you know their actual work and we kind of discuss different things that they were doing can you give a specific example um i don't uh, really uh you know recall you know remember but we used to like you know do like different different games you know and stuff to help them try to keep them uh focused and stuff and things of that nature you know okay that's fine um, yeah Thank you very much, you know, for, for sharing. Uh, give me one second. Did I share with you guys a jam board or no? We did the jam board activity? Yes, um, we did. We did yeah, that. Yes. yes. Uh, you know, I've done, you know, two different sessions. I'm not sure, you know, if I did it with this group or not. Okay. So now I'm going to show you what the district you know, has purchased in terms of uh, enhancing that engagement with students and bringing in blended technology in the classroom. So it's not you know, just the pedagogical understanding or the theoretical knowledge of uh, uh, what blending learning and teaching is. Now we have the tools and let me show you that. I want any one of you who has experience, who has uh, experience you with the near pond somebody who has used near pond recently near pod's good have you used mr lewis have you used it uh, recently yeah. in the classroom yeah oh yeah sure we use it we use it regularly mm -hmm. Wonderful. And Paradise, well uh near pod's better uh, it's it's clearer i think than pear deck it doesn't cost as much either <laughs> okay, uh, Tiffany. I guess you know you have used. That. Can you can you share us you know, your experience with Tiffany uh, with the uh, Neopod and how you use it? Or well, what subject? Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. Um, I use Neopod uh, for ELA. Mm -hmm. So we would, um, for example, one of the things that we did was the Amanda Gorman's. Um, her mm -hmm. poem that she read mm -hmm. for the uh, president inauguration. Mm -hmm. And what I did was I actually did a whole lesson on it. Mm -hmm. And um, 
I love that Nearpod again is like student paced. So you know everyone is on their own doing their own time and we can interact like we take polls within the assignment and they can respond to each other, comment to each other's um, like uh, comment on each other's work. Okay. Let me, uh, um, um, I think, you know, what, what you, um, what you're mentioning, let me, you know, go to, I think, you know, maybe I have that, that particular lesson right here, what you're talking about, um, Mary, um, uh, Tiffany, let me show you here. Uh, this was Amanda. I'm trying to get to that. Do you, do you know the title of that presentation? Or we can, you know, just look for Amanda, I believe here. There you go, Amanda Gorman. Okay. I think it's the hell we climb. <laughs> so this is a lesson. This is what Tiffany is talking about, by the way. That's now, the exact one. There you go. This is the exact one. Now, this one probably it doesn't have uh, all uh, the uh, the features in there because you know this is showing you a video because. The, the newer lessons uh, in your pod, and there's a whole host of lessons you know, they have added in the last uh, couple of months, uh, would allow you to stop these video in the, in the middle and you know, in, uh, either uh, embed a question or there will be questions embedded already for you. Um, but the thing is, uh, all these activities that, that students can do, wherein this is a collaborative board, where the students, you know, write down their answers and, and, and uh, whatever, you know, the, the prompt is. Uh, and, and then the answers show up right there. Students, you know, can respond to each other's responses. All that kind of a stuff, you know, goes in here. But let me show you uh, some of uh, the, the lesson that have a lot of uh, activities in it. We want to give me an example. Okay, uh, let me see if I have the yellow wallpaper we talked about. Yellow wallpaper with any, any uh, language arts, we can go to the Nearpod library, high school, English language arts, and here we have a lesson. So let's go to introduction to Edgar Allan Poe. This is grade seven through ten, uh, seven through twelve. So, so uh, Dr. Come... Sleen, there's no. I checked Nearpod before. There's no yellow wallpaper stuff on there. Oh, okay. Um, but I, I believe you know I cre I had created my own because the the beauty is you can pick up uh, a presentation of a lesson from Google Slides if you have created something already, mm -hmm. and, and bring it into Nearpod, and if sure. you can work all of that for you to make it interactive with all these features that are embedded in here. You can create a, 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 a collaborative board. You can create a, a poll in here. You can create an assessment in here. All you have to do is just import it from there and then keep on inserting new features. And I, I can show you that also, but probably that would require a whole different lesson, which we can do later on. So look at you know this one. This is a, a pre-designed, a pre-constructed lesson for you on Edgar Allan Poe. So you're starting with the, you know, the materials and all that kind of stuff. These are initial, um, you know, introductory slides. Then you get to the main thing where the essential questions. Now, the thing is, you can use this kind of a lesson, pre-made lesson, pre-constructed lesson for live teaching or for um, Mm, off-site teaching or, or student paced teaching or asynchronous teaching also. So this is a lesson that has, uh, you know, these components. You have the engaging and exploring part, then the elaborating and explaining, and finally evaluating for 10 minutes. It's a 45-minute lesson, 33 slides at the top. We are already at the fifth slide. So this is the first thing. It comes as a very simple question. How much do you already know about Edgar Allan Poe? A lot, a little, and all that, so just to get a feel of that. You have a student's answer to this question, and then you move on to the introduction. Before about him, um, we'll, we'll fill out the chart on the next slide to list what you already know about, because you answered that. So what do you know about him? Uh, he, he has been 
what kind of stories he has been writing you can you can put a text here um okay um we can say here all right you know i know that he wrote uh, uh the raven okay um he has been writing stories you know which are uh, you know gothic or, or noir kind of stories okay we can we can do here all that you know about it you know you can write down here and then students will submit that it will come to you automatically and then you move on to the next one um now you get into the the explanation part of uh, the lesson and here you have a video about uh at Allan poe it's a three minute um, uh, video students will watch that and after that you have another question that is based on this video they just saw so students will respond to that now the thing is you can you can uh, modify this le lesson in a way that students will not be able to skip the 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 components that you want them to answer that you uh, do want them to answer they will not be able to move forward like that so keep on moving now we're into the second part of that and it's a further explanation for another 20 minutes or so that this is where you know, they are reading about uh, by going to um you know by, by going to a website about you know his poems so there are more about uh, um edgar Allan poe uh, some other um, examples from that and now here there's another um, activity here where the students read the poem and then they go back and answer the questions complete the chart below write at least one thought in each column that comes to your mind that comes here now here's an open-ended question this is for extended writing students read and then which words painted in the picture you know painted in a pic uh, paint a picture in your mind answer that question here and which lines stand out for you all of that you know goes for extended answer extended response and further examples of his writing now um another video here which um, which kind of introduces um, Edgar Allan Poe in uh, from another perspective. So, if you look at the top, if you look at the top, you know there are thirty-three slides in total, and we are still on slide twenty-one. You can convert this into, uh, you know, a two-session or three-session project instead of you know just one session. So two or three uh, session unit, you know, will will make it complete. The purpose is to show you that a very powerful resource to engage students is coming your way in the form of this new thing called Nearpod. If you haven't tried it, this is time. And this is, by the way, this has uh, uh, language arts content, it has science content, it has uh, um, content on uh, um, social studies almost all subject areas that we need are in this uh, math math is there for math teachers you know there are all sorts of lessons here which explain interaction um and and student um submissions all sorts of things you know are here you can continue sorting it you know by the grade level and you will find this uh, a really a resource that will make your teaching much easier. Yes, Suzette, uh, I understand uh, the district has purchased uh, a district license for Nearpod. So, if uh, your school uh, didn't purchase it, you know, before, you'll be able to make use of that. So, a very powerful. A repertoire of lessons coming your way very soon. What, uh, uh, Mr. Sodi? Yes, Mr. Lewis. One thing about Nearpod is that I found that it was better to use uh, like Edpuzzle or um, because you could track with Edpuzzle, you can track who's answering as they're answering when it's virtual 100%. 
But with blended learning, I think Nearpod will be much uh, will be better in that sense. With uh, of course, yeah. um, and and I believe the Nearpod will also allow you the same feature because they have actually um, embedded Ed Puzzle, the actual Ed Puzzle. Right, right. Some of them Ed Puzzle, but with your own Ed Puzzle itself, you can log in. You can see, um, you can see who's doing what. Who's doing what? That's what I'm saying. I think Nearpod is moving towards that. Idea, you will see in the reports, you'll be able to see student mm. uh, responses and all that. If you if you get to the report section of that, you'll be yeah. able to see student okay. responses there. Very good. So a lot of good things coming your way. Um, huge time saver. And, and you know you don't want to recreate something that has already been done, but you do, do need to modify. You have the ability to copy and modify each one of these lessons the way you want for your students. You can you know, add your own questions, you can add your own resources, your own links, whatever you want to do. You can you know, feel free to um, edit a lesson the way you want it. Okay, so let's go back here. All right, so now what I would like you to do, I will show you another uh, resource here, but what I want you to do is go to this resource and create a video-based lesson of your own. And I'm gonna show you the link here. This is a, a TED Ed lesson. Please click on this. Wonderful, um, Ms. Williams. Uh, can you tell us, uh, you said, you know, you uploaded your old lessons from Google Slides into Nearpod. How did that go? Was it a, a smoother uh, kind of a process or, you know, you had to, you know, go through a lot of hoops to convert your own lessons from Google Slides into uh, Nearpod? How was it, Ms. Williams? Hi, Dr. Salim. So, Hello. I, <laughs> how are you? So, Good. Um, we had our lessons in, uh, Google slides from previous years. Mm -hmm. And I found that in order to get the, the students activities, um, after each thought, we had to split it. So let's say your lesson had 15 slides. Mm -hmm. Um, I would put in five slides and call that lesson three, part one. And then within those slides, I would put in either the, um, the chalkboard for students to share their thoughts or do a quick quiz or um, do a, a poll. But I try to get the activities in after um, every thought just to see how the students are learning. And just like you mentioned earlier, um, you can go to reports and look at their responses so you can check to see um, what students got the concept and which one did not. But no, it was not a hassle. Um, there is an option there to upload your own Google Slides. Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of splitting the lesson for it to be the most effective. Were you using the, the, the free version or were you using the, the, the premium version of that? Um, free, the free version. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And it, it, it said that we um, only had a certain amount of space within their platform. But when I emailed the, the personnel for Nearpod, she was generous and she added more time for us. But I'd asked if we could speak to our admin or our principal. Mm -hmm. And she would give the school a, a good rate. So okay. we had that discussion with her. And for anybody else here from any school, you can reach out to them. They just want to know that the admin is the person that has the buy-in. So they, they're yes. dealing with the, the school and not just one teacher. Yes. And I believe, you know, that, like I said you know, earlier, that uh, I, I believe this, the district has finalized uh, procuring this for everybody. 
So you should all have access to their premium version, meaning you would have unlimited access to all the lesson plans and everything. Uh, Absolutely. It's, it's coming your way and you're going to like it. Uh, uh, Mr. Avino has a question. How do you import? Let me show you, Mr. Avino. Uh, Thank what you. do we talk about when we say import? Uh, let me show you um, importing it from you. importing it, you know, from your Google Slides. So you go to Nearpod once you have that, and uh, you what they call uh, create lesson. You see this create lesson? You have you know these options: um, create lesson, create video, and all that. And all the way at the bottom is create Google Slides. Okay. So it will create, it will take you to uh, you, you log in with your uh, PPS staff account. You allow all of that. And look what is done. It is open up a Google slide for you. Okay. Here you can, you know, just bring in uh, slides, import slides, you know, from your previous uh, uh, lessons, or you know, you can open up a, a presentation. Let's say if I have a, a presentation on something, something, whatever it's it is. Stop presenting. I'm sorry. You're not sharing, doctor. Oh, I'm sorry. Hold on, hold on. Give me one second. So, doc, you can also. Um, import, I guess, the uh, videos I recorded for all of my lessons then? Yes, of course. Uh, let me show you what I'm trying to show you here. Oops. Okay. So this is where I'd come. This is what you know, I was trying to show you. You know, uh, it opened up uh, a near pod lesson, you want to call it a, a, a Vino lesson. Okay. And now what I'm going to do that um, I'm going to go to file and either import slides or open up another one. So I can, uh, let's say, open up uh, a presentation from here and These are, let's say, these are all the slides from another presentation. Okay. Um, so I'm going to, what I'm going to do, I'm going to just copy all of my slides here. Copy. And I'm going to bring back here to that uh, near part thingy. And I'm going to paste it here. Give me one second. So all of my slides are now here. And these slides will be picked up by Nearpod. So you can also go here in add-ons and you can add um, a, a Nearpod, we'll call plugin add-on. You can click on that and it will open up. It will give you, it will ask you for all the permissions. Give them the permission from your PPS staff account. And it's opening up near part on the sidebar here. And from here, you can keep on dragging and dropping more and more of uh, near part elements that you want. You want to include a collaborative board, just bring a collaborative board and add that to this presentation. And ultimately, this will save it to near part. See, it created a new uh, Nearpod slide here. That, that, that is actually that board, you know, we saw a Nearpod slide. So this will become your new uh, Nearpod presentation.
Okay. A lot of uh, you need to, like I said, you know, if you once once you have access to Nearpod, play around with the different features of that. Um, you know, it should not take more than a couple of days, and uh, um, you will realize that this is a uh, this is a, a resource that you will find it that you can live without after some time. So, um, yes, Tiffany, I I start presenting now. So at this point, folks. What I want you to do, like I said, this is our final activity. I want you to go to that uh, um, TED Ed. Because right now, not all of you have access to Nearpod. We'll, so we'll wait for that. Otherwise, I would have asked you to create a lesson in Nearpod. I want you to go to ed.ted.com. Use your PPS staff account uh, to uh, create an account if you don't have already. Pick up one of uh, the video lessons from your subject area and convert that into a lesson. Um, it is a self-guided process. You'll see um, it will it will tell you what to do next. And all lessons have you know just the same format. It will ask you to do some watching and then some thinking, some discussion, some answering questions, and all of that. There are you know four or five steps in each lesson, and I would like you to do at least one lesson in your own content area using uh, this resource ed.ted.com. And I'm telling you, some of the lessons are, are are done already for you. I mean, if you find a lesson that you that you that you'd like to use, uh, you're gonna love this resource. What is the resource again? Can you put it in the? Uh... I did. Okay, thanks. It's in the ch it's in the chat. Um, I would like uh, at least you know two of you to uh, show what uh, whatever you know you uh, you have created. One in phys ed and one in science. Uh, two subject areas: language arts. You know, get a pass. That's my favorite group. I I am a firm believer in favoritism. Right, Tiffany? I'm a firm, firm believer in favoritism. So, you know, uh, I have, you know, this special <laughs> pass for uh, language arts teachers. All right. Um, you know what? Um, I'm going to show you. I think um, Diana has, uh, uh, has sent something. So this was my first time actually using this. Good afternoon. I, I'm actually fascinated by how quickly and like how user friendly that was. I found a um, little video about growth mindset versus um, fixed mindset. Mm -hmm. And then um, and then I just uh, got I used the question that was actually given uh, at the end of the video. Uh -huh. Uh, for discussion. So that was pretty easy to put together. So thank you for um, sharing this tool. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm glad you know that you that you found it useful. There are there are thousands of lessons on this uh, site alone for free. This is part of the TED program. And uh, I can tell you, uh, if you use a combination of TED and, and Nearpod, don't you know, stress yourself, you got enough uh, to work with you got you know so many resources in these two things that you don't need to go anywhere and all are interactive um and uh, near pod is probably 10 times more interactive than even this one so if I, what i'm showing you here look at that that you start you know with watching the video once you're done watching the video that's the next step dig deeper when you dig deeper you, you do you think it's possible to form uh, to go from a fixed mindset, uh, you know, to a growth mindset. What does it take? So this is a question, and the student have to answer that question. You start a discussion. The students, you know, will be answering their responses here. Okay. So phenomenal, phenomenal resource, and then you end up finally. So here again, students will be giving an extended writing response to this prompt here. Okay. Thank you, uh, 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 Diana. Thank you for sharing this. This thank you. Wonderful. It's been a pleasure. Thank you very much. 
And and Miss Williams is saying she found hospitality and tourism because that's what you know, she teaches in that school. So you have the hospitality and tourism videos also. I'm telling you, this is this is an un uh, not unused but you know less used resource. Uh, use it as much as you can, um, and you will you will have plenty to to work with, and you will never run out of material to teach. Just these two resources, TED and uh, the other one, uh, Nearpon. That's that's about it for this year. Would you import TED into Nearpod or use them separately? No, I would say you know keep them separate. And and TED, by the way, also allows you to keep track of you know student logins and all that. I made all of my students to create you know their TED accounts with their PPS student account, and they were able to uh, you know follow. And you were able to actually, as a teacher, I was able to to uh, to to keep track of you know their work and their grades and all that. Nice. Um, Samira saying, you know, why can't you divide by zero? That's a good lesson. Nice. Yes, um, um, Ms. Cruz. Or Mr. Cruz, I, I, I can't tell you. Yes, TEDA is free. Yes, Somia. Um, yes, I will show is you. I will, yeah. I will show you next time because I think you know we are we are we are at the we are uh, near the end of our session for today, but I promise you I'll stop by your schools throughout the year. I'll be stopping by uh, uh, each and every school. That's my new responsibility. I'll be uh, as as uh, as the head of uh, the Department of Instruction Technology. I'll be stopping by. I'll be sharing with you all of uh, the things you know that I learn. I'll share those with you. In the meantime, please. Do join me on that uh, the, that LinkedIn group you know that I had shared with you earlier. If you join me on that link, I'll be able to uh, uh, because whatever I record here, um, if I could show you around here, I'm going to stop presenting and I'm show you. Um, I have you know this is a half of my um, what they call a studio here. I um, I I I, I kind of I have invested a little bit of. Uh, um, my own money in creating this resource that I have, you know, that that's how, you know, I communicate. If you look at that behind me, this is a green screen. That's where, you know, you were seeing the, the title of the book, you know, that I was saying. Uh, this is how uh, professional uh, I, I try to be. You know, I have this uh, light right here. Uh, that's why you can see me in person and uh, probably a little more clear because this is how real teaching happen this is what uh what they call the show the press this is one of the principle 13 principles of effective online teaching that you have to make it lifelike this is where the real um have this this is where uh, you know you can make it you know the person becoming alive if you look at that this is a one camera i have here this is another uh, monitor i'm looking at this is my uh, this is a mon monitor. Sometimes I would use this one for uh, teleprompting. This is where I, I teleprompt. So all of this little bit, I mean, it's not thousands of dollars. Honestly, it's a couple of hundred dollars. But the, the, the good thing is once I have invested this, this has taken my presentations and, and the courses that you know, I have created for um, um, instructional technology and online teaching. I have, I've been able to take these courses to next level by, uh, you know, just investing a couple of... Uh, you know, hundred bucks, and in my own learning and in my own teaching. So um, that's about it. And uh, let me see. Uh, um, how how are the teacher got there without paying five dollars? Um. I don't know. <laughs> I don't think it's supposed to pay. Check. Try again. Yeah, you. I'm still trying. They keep on asking me to pay five dollars. No, once you re log in and put your use your email, it will send confirmation to your email, and just actually you can maneuver from there. Did you log in using your PPS account? Yeah, I'll try. Yes, I, I did. went straight to it. Kainan, you via Google. 
<laughs> I think it was ad.ted.com. I'm not sure, you know, why it's asking you for money. Uh, make sure, you know, that, uh, you know, it's been... Yeah. Yeah. They, they, say they want to verify, they want to verify my, uh, my account and then they ask for $5. Okay, I'll try again. Yes, please do so. Um, thank you, uh, uh, Nicholas. We, uh, I will stop by your school also. Um, I'm now I'm going to put you know, the the link, you know, for that uh, um, for that uh, whatever I have uh, that uh, LinkedIn group. Give me one second. I'm going I'm to put that. This 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 is the group. Um, this is the tiny URL at the bottom. Uh, I'm gonna put this also five C seven D and EX seven. There we go. Um, thank you, Dr. Slim. My, my pleasure, sir. Thank you very much. It was uh, very kind of you. I'm, uh, I am uh, honestly, I'm, I'm humbled by your contribution because you know this presentation wouldn't be possible, you know, without your your uh, contribution, um, and that's what makes it worth its while. Um, I, I really thank you. I, you know, I just you know I sent you the link, you know, to uh, to my uh, LinkedIn group. If you want to join, you know, that's what I put in, whatever I, I do, the recordings and all that, and the courses I teach, I pick up the, uh, the kind of a, a small, um, you know, um, scripts from there, and I also post those. Um, and, uh, you know, whatever resources I get uh, that I, I, I find useful, especially for all kind of uh, students, I share it over there. So um, you can go ahead and you can, you know, join in there. I've uh, put this in here. Again. And thank you. Uh, I thank you very much for your time. We appreciate thank you, it, man. Thank <laughs> you, Miss Hart. You know, you have been wonderful. Have a great weekend. Thank you, folks. Thank you, thank you Doctor. Miss you. Have a great weekend. Bye bye. Bye. Have, have a good weekend. <laughs> bye. Have a nice weekend. Thank you. Bye. Bye, Mr. Celine. Bye. 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 Have a good weekend, everybody. Thank you. You too. Have a good weekend. Good to see you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. A man so nice, you know, must come at least twice. Mr. Salim, have a good one, my friend. You too, sir. Thank you very much. All right. You did a very good job on this presentation. I it's almost like you did it before. I, I appreciate that, you know, Mr. Bini. I, you know that, you know, I, I can do it only when you are around. <laughs> listen to Bini. Listen to Bini kicking up. You, you know, it's like the first time, uh, for for first time no. like you, you did a great Be job. Bini was always nice to me. I know that. It's very crazy. Not I'm like still you. Waiting, I'm, I'm still I'm like some of us, treadmill. right? Yeah. I have to stand up treadmill in my room. <laughs> <laughs> that treadmill is still there. Is it Have a, a great a weekend and, and uh, absolutely uh, stop by and see me. Of course, I will stop by. All right. Thank, All right. thank you very much. All right. Take care. All right. Bye bye. All right. Thank you. Thank bye you, bye. folks. I'm the host, you know, so I, I would, you know, wait until, you know, all of you are gone and then I'll go. I'm really hungry now. Jasmine, you seem hungry too. That okay, Janet. Pleasure meeting you. Thank you very much. I, I like the beach behind you. I I can see that. <laughs> this is the closest you know we can get to the beach now. The schools have started. Thank you, Donna. No, you know, my, my treadmill is not for sale. Sorry.
Thank you, Vincent. Yes, Mary. Uh, sure, you know. I think if you uh, if you send me that um, invitation, I'll get it from there. Thank you, Doctor Salim. That Anytime, was a superfluous sir. PD. You know. Thank you, sir. You know that you are my main man. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, I'll be, you know, I'm going to be knocking on your door for uh, reiterating instructions and things like that. You're the only one who doesn't even need to knock at my door. <laughs> I'll come <laughs> bursting in, especially if you got some lamb for me or whatever. Uh, yeah, you go. <laughs> pizza. Pizza, my friend. Oh, yeah, I'm telling you, you know, I, I got that ready. That Napolitan pizza is ready. <laughs> do you, um, do you uh, ship your pizzas? Because I'll uh, pay for come the on, FedEx. Man, you know, you know, this is this is a man-to-man -man <laughs> thing, you know. I kind of can't do that, you know. We've got to bring a bourbon with you, and, you know, we're going to do it here. Nice. Well, All right. Sounds good. All right, listen, thanks a lot again, and we'll see you uh, later on sometime. Of course, sir. Thank you very much. Touch. Thank you. Dr. Salim, I tr did try to find you. It's Mary Justice on LinkedIn, oh. but there are about 100 people with your same name, which I oh. find extremely hard to believe. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> I didn't no. realize. Uh, no problem. I put, let me, let I put, me do that at my yes. end. I can, I can do that at my Maybe end. you can invite me because... I'm easy, Mary Justice. I'm you like you're the easy. personal finance teacher at Eastside. Yes, I was. Did you hear about me? Now I know <laughs> that I was this wonderful personal finance. Yes, now I and know. So my reputation. You heard about me. I heard a lot about you, but I don't think we've personally met yet. So. Oh my God! Yes, yeah, well, I'm I miss you. Yeah, well, I was the there. I was there, right, you know, right uh, uh, on the same floor. Oh, so, okay, so we did probably meet that brief uh, month that we were together. I apologize because I, I'm, I had no, so but many. I've been, I've been out from there for almost. Uh, oh, you have been? Two, two and a half years, three years. Oh, okay. Well, keep in mind that I started one day before the pandemic, so I had very little FaceTime with everyone. Oh, except no, 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 no. Then, then probably, you know, that definitely we haven't met. Okay. I left a, a year before that, before the pandemic. Oh, okay. Then I don't feel bad because I have done that with people and they say, are you kidding? You met me. How could you forget? And they say, well, the mask plus, you know, <laughs> you know uh, that's right. 500. I, I just uh, sent you um, the um, invitation. The okay. Invitation. Great. All right. Yeah. I really appreciate that opportunity. I really look forward. I do a lot. I did a lot of Nearpod last year, but Wonderful. not so much creating as uh taking a lot of, uh, you know, the work that was available. There's a, a plethora of uh, personal finance Nearpod lessons through. Oh, wow. uh, yeah, there's so much. Um, I really, I do feel sad that I'm not going to be able to build on, uh, you know, continue with that course, but they needed me as a special ed teacher in school 26. So I'm oh. ready to, uh, yeah, I'm ready to go back to, uh, you oh, know. So, uh, uh, you know no more at East Side? No more east side. I'm going to be in third oh, grade. Okay. I Who knows, though? I feel like... But I'll definitely start well, by okay. your new school also. I'll start by there. That'll be that'll be great. I'm looking forward to it. And then yeah. I'll learn you know, more of what I'm going to be doing. Of okay, course. have a great weekend. You too. Thank you very much, folks. I'll see you next time, folks. Thank you. It was very nice talking to all of you. Bye-bye.